the most deceptive ever. But God is always protecting us as part of His creation. And one of His principal tools is that of transformation could come to our lives. One of the most powerful tools of transformations is one of God's has used throughout the scripture. I'm not sure if I am being clear, but this is what I will be talking about. We all have uh, in our uh, surra- we all are surrounded by deceptions. In our lives, we will find things that will try to kill us, will try to destroy us. So, what I will be talking about is how God will protect you as a children of Him and will keep you safe. We have a great, great God. Amen? We have a great, great Savior. Amen? And we do have a great A great protector. His name is Holy Spirit. So, sometimes we will face all of those uh, issues. We will face some paths where we will be walking in. And sometimes we will be hurt by that uh, Decepticon, Satan. The Word of God talks about... uh, the Word of God talks about a man who was the same uh, name that I am uh, that, w- that I was named, Job. Are you familiar with that uh, a character in the Bible, Job? He had everything. He had a beautiful wife. He had a beautiful children. He had a beautiful um, uh, property. He was the most richest guy in the. Uh, land, but suddenly, according to the circumstances, he lost everything. Well, the book of God is dedicated to talk about why, why the, 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 the bad things happen to the good persons. That's what the book of Job talks about. You know what? Sometimes we do believe that uh, we are punishing, we are being punished by God because we are bad. This is, I have, this is something that I have been learning. We are not punishing, did I say it right? Punish, being punished, thank you, but for the Lord. When we have a lot of our different problems. When my daughter died, that was six years ago, a lady in my church said these words, Or pastor, it's been punished by God. She said so. She did. You know, I heard that through one of my deacons. What I answered to that was, if I should pay my sins through my, uh, uh, through my kid's life, I would, I would not have, you know, enough kids for God. You know what I'm saying? I would not have sufficient number of boys and girls to pay my sin to God. Sometimes we do believe that when somebody is having kind of a trial time, is being punished by God. Always like that. The things that had happened to Job had nothing to do with sin. His misfortunes were caused by Satan. If you look deeper in the Bible, there is some kind of a dialogue. Some kind of a talk between God and the evil. The evil was trying to kill Job, to kill his children. But for some reason, God allowed him to do everything according to his perfect will. 
Sometimes we don't see what is behind the trials, behind the sickness. But God does. God always does. He's watching over each one of us. He is watching over every single detail, every single event in our lives. That's the God that I would like to talk about. When we go to the New Testament, we find that the story has not changed. Suffering, say it with me, suffering. Can you say it louder? Suffering. In the lives of believers, it's for real. Suffering will happen. And it will happen to you, and it may happen to me. That's part of the life. Sometimes we have the wrong conception about the Christianity. Nothing will happen wrong to us. Wait a minute. According to your will, according to your wish, or according to God's eyes. Sometimes we will walk into those paths. You know what I'm saying, right? We need to learn. God allows us to go into those paths Because He is working in my temperament. He is working in my patience. He is working in my faith. But sometimes we don't see it like that. Sometimes we go like, God, where are you? God, do I owe you something? Uh, Are you trying to, is this the payback time or what? Sometimes we don't understand what is going on in our lives. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. That's the kind of Savior that we have. That's the kind of God that is taking care of us. Acts, Acts, chap, uh, uh, Acts 14. Acts chapter 14. Tell us what when Paul and Barnabas returned to the churches of Lystra, Iconium and Antioch, Antioch they dedicated themselves to strength the disciples and encouraged him to remain through to the faith. They said these words, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. As you can see, I am a proud Mexican. And the most humble Mexican in town. I'm very, I'm very, I'm very handsome. See what I'm saying? Look at my boy. He goes like, oh no, daddy. I have a beautiful wife, beautiful kids, I have a beautiful family here. Why am I saying all of this? I'm not arrogant. I'm very proud. In my country, when you are a Christian, when you decide to follow Jesus, you go through many different hard time they will reject you because you're christian they may kill you because you do not believe what they do believe they do believe in idols they do believe in witchcraft if you're you're, if you're not part of that they can kill you actually if they kill you they will believe that they will be doing some kind of a special favor to god We need to understand there is many hardships to enter in the kingdom of God. In First Peter chapter 4, the Apostle Peter tells the Christian there, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering. As thug, something strange were happening to you, but rejoice. Can you say it with me? Rejoice. 